Good evening and welcome to Mass United Insurance's Dyna Line. I'm your host, Andrew Seeley. To all our viewers on Digital Sports Max and Scene TV, a very special welcome. And on tonight's show, Mass United Insurance's Dyna Line is going English. The Hampshire County cricket team is here and the British Army is in Barbados. All that and more on tonight's Mass United Insurance's. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. With me, Charles Freeston. He's a second 11 coach with Hampshire. They're in the Caribbean, in Barbados in particular, as usual, for the winter tour as they prepare for the 2015 season. Uh, Charles, how's it gone so far for the team? Yeah, it's been a great tour so far. Um, uh, the lads got a lot from it. Uh, the facilities have been good. Uh, we've been training at a couple of grounds and they've, they've been excellent. So the boys are enjoying it. What's the point of uh, Hampshire, Nottinghamshire, Northamptonshire, etc., coming out to Barbados for pre-season training to go back into what can be some terribly cold weather at the start of the English season? Yeah, I think it's a very long winter sometimes back <laughs> home, and uh, and the lads train pretty hard. Obviously, we're inside, um, so to actually get together as a group and for all their new signings and, and old players to come together as a group and and kind of gel uh, for a pre-season tour, I think is an excellent idea. Uh, and with the weather here, you're guaranteed days to practice and days to play so you get good opposition and, and good facilities. In terms of uh, English cricket I mean obviously the ICC Cricket World Cup ongoing at this stage uh, your thoughts on what happened to England at the World Cup 2015? Uh, obviously very disappointing uh, you know a lot of the counties all the counties put a lot of time and effort in um, and to see the senior side struggles as as they did is is disappointing and uh, I, I think the way the way that they've gone out of the of the World Cup is probably more disappointing than the fact that they did. So it looked um, it looked like the guys were were uh, struggling to come to terms and compete with the top sides. So it's very disappointing. But hopefully it will turn around soon. Tell me what your thoughts on what went wrong. I mean, there was so much preparation that the team has made. Uh, what do you think went wrong? I, I think the, the side chopped and changed quite a lot. Um, and they were always trying to do the right things. I think they made the changes that they felt were, were correct and, and necessary. Uh, it's very hard for us to, to say what went wrong. Obviously, we concentrate on, on Hampshire and County Cricket and trying to put the next ones through. Um, and we believe that we're doing that with the likes of James Vince, who's on the horizon, and, and, and others as well. So it's very difficult for us to say, you know, Peter Moores and his, and his team, are, they're a good team, and I'm sure that they're... Um, they're as disappointed as anyone. So to, to actually say what went wrong is, is very difficult because the players are there and they're coming through. In terms of uh, the other type of cricket, obviously the England team in the Caribbean very soon and in fact in a couple of weeks the first test will be played. Mm. Uh, your thoughts on that team as selected and uh, England's type of performance as they prepare for yet another Ashes tour? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it'll be a. Uh, the guys will be quite pleased to go back to that form where England are still still one of the better sides mm. in. So I think they'll be quite pleased to go to that. The the side that they've picked or the squad that they've picked is is quite an exciting one. I think it rewards players that have done well through the county season, uh, the likes of Lyth and and so on. So I think it's quite an exciting time, and the boys will be pleased to get back into that format. In terms of the selection, as you mentioned, uh, some people have been critical of uh, English cricket in terms of the way that it is organised, uh, especially as it relates more so to the shortened form of the game. Obviously, the concentration in England still remains the longer version of the game. It does, and there's definitely work going in. You know, I've been involved in some of the, the international stuff at lower levels, and I know the coaches that work there, and there's a big... Uh, push towards trying to change that focus and trying to make sure not change but but add to it so that the guys games are developing in one day cricket um, we are certainly at disadvantage in, in England whereas you can play a lot longer here the weather is excellent we lose a lot of time to that and I think the game time is something that we've we've earmarked as uh, something that's necessary to give more so make better time of the guys when the junior players and play more games so that they can learn that better um, and I think that's an area where it's been identified and certainly at junior level that's happening. So hopefully that'll go through to Peter Moores and his team. If we touch a little bit on something a bit controversial, Kevin Peterson, 
Uh, what of the future of him? Uh, James Whitaker has indicated that England have moved on from mm. Kevin Peterson. Mm. Uh, do you agree with that? Oh, it's it's very tough. Without knowing what's happened, it's very tough. I mean, what is clear is that he's still a quality player, isn't he? And I think um, I think it, an ideal scenario is is for everybody to find a way that he can be integrated mm. to play again. But if, I don't know what happened, and I, I wouldn't like to comment on it. But he's a class player, and it's a shame that we're not seeing him play. Right, I, it certainly is, and uh, he, in fact, he has indicated that mm. he would possibly forego the IPL and even the CPL here in the Caribbean right. in June, July, just to play for England again. It'd be good if it can happen, huh? But uh, you know, I don't know the ins and outs, and I, I can't comment on it. But from a personal point of view, I'd love to see him play in international cricket, and I think uh, there's plenty of people that are in that boat. If we go back to Hampshire now, this pre-season tour, when you go back to the UK next week, what's what's up uh, for just prior to the start of the season? Yeah, so we, we'll train together as a squad, um, hopefully outside, weather dependent, <laughs> uh, but we'll train together as a squad for, for five or six days and the guys have got a, a two-day game uh, friendly against Surrey, so mm -hmm. that'll be nice and competitive uh, end of March. Um, and then leading on from that, obviously the squads, the second team program starts, academy program, so there's plenty of cricket. Um, but just when we get back, like I say, hopefully the weather will hold out and we've got four or five days training together as a squad back home, getting used to English conditions, which will be very different to here. Right. <laughs> That's Charles Freeston. He's a junior coach or a second 11 coach with the Hampshire County Cricket Club. And you're watching Massey United Insurances, line and line. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. And welcome back to Massey United Insurance's Line and Length. And as mentioned, the British Army is in town. And we are at the Franklin Stevenson Academy, and their coach, Stuart Houghton, is with me. Stuart, tell us a bit about this British Army team. OK, um, well, we, we come from everywhere, all, all throughout the British Army, um, uh, all different um, trade groups, different uh, soldiers and, and officers. Um, and we have a, we have a, we're, we're over here for our pre-season um, in Barbados and St Lucia. We're playing uh, seven uh, one-day uh, fixtures, um, predominantly 2020 fixtures, um, as a preparation for our inter-services T20, uh, which takes place in Lords in, in June. Um, so we've taken the opportunity to come out here uh, in, in uh, for, for the two weeks. Well, tell us a bit about the team. Uh, and back in the day, as we would say, the British Army played um, competitive cricket at perhaps the highest level. What's the current status of uh, the British Army cricket? Well, currently at the moment, we, we, we probably align ourselves with around about um, minor counties sort of standard uh, cricket. Um, we've, a number of the squad have played um, sort of second 11 county cricket and minor counties cricket. Um, so we'd align ourselves with around about there. We still hold some of the fixtures with uh, county sides, but um, obviously with the fixture, uh, fixtures um, uh, being so, so congested in the summer, it's, and our guys being allowed to be released from work to play, um, obviously that, 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 that depends on who we play. Right, of course, uh, how come a British Army team in Barbados for pre-season training? We've had counties and in fact county teams are in the Barbados and the Caribbean now. Uh, your first time coming this type of foray of the British Army into Barbados? Um, yeah, we've uh, we've never toured. As far as I'm aware, we've not toured uh, Barbados um, as a as a full British Army side. I know there's um, individual core sides um, mm. have come out here before, but um, as a as a senior Army eleven or or squad, this is uh, the, certainly the first time I know that we've we've come out here um, on a on a on a proper pre-season tour. And tell us a bit about Stuart Houghton. Uh, your background in cricket, you're the coach of this team, means that you must have gone through some kind of process. Tell us a bit about Stuart Houghton. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I actually did my first sort of coaching award when I was relatively young and then obviously now I've sort of finished my playing career, I, I, I played a bit of minor counties cricket for uh, Cambridgeshire and, and played for combined services in the army uh, for 10 or 12 years and uh, I, I've now sort of gone through the um, uh, the ECB um, coaches um, coaches coaches association program, um, and I'm currently on my level three, um, which is uh, sort of 
performance level coaching, um, and I do the I do tutoring uh, um, for level two coaches. Uh, level two coaches. Any thoughts of becoming even more involved in coaching, perhaps at the highest level or at the higher level? Um, oh, it, it certainly would be a, an aspiration, um, you know. Uh, but those jobs are quite few and far between, um, and I've still obviously got my, uh, my my real job, as it were, in the army. So uh, I won't be doing that for a few years. In terms of English cricket, uh, we couldn't leave you without talking about the England performance or lack thereof at the ICC Cricket World Cup. Your thoughts? Uh, I think I, I think you know it's, it, it, there was a, there was a, some quite fundamental big changes um, you know in fairly short order before the before the tournament started and uh, you know and actually the performance didn't really reflect probably the quality of players that are in the side um, and I'm sure England will be you know very disappointed with that because they performed got to the final in the uh, the, the tri nations uh, tournament beforehand and 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 you know there, there are changes a new captain a new coach um, and those sort of things take time to come to fruition um, and I'm sure you know Peter Moores and Owen Morgan have a lot to think about you know when they get, when they when the season starts back in the UK well it's not so much back in the UK the England team are in the Caribbean in a matter of weeks to play a three test series against the West Indies. Obviously in test cricket England is much better but uh, your thoughts on that upcoming series West Indies versus England? Well I think it's interesting because um, obviously Jonathan Trott's been called back into the squad um, and there's a couple of new faces um, in Mark Wood who's a good bowler from and, and Adam Lyth who's, who's, who's done very well obviously at Yorkshire and with the England Lions um, as did Trott uh, in South Africa just recently um, so it'd be interesting to see them you know, hopefully uh, give a go I mean I think I don't think there's, we've we've got too much to worry about um, test test cricket wise at the moment I think we're in a reasonably good place um, we we've 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 we now need to move forward I think in ODIs and and perhaps take 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 some uh, note of the West Indies. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Stuart Houghton. He's the coach of the British Army team. You're watching Massey United Insurances, line and length. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. Jack Prinsloo is the captain of the British Army team and believe it or not, Jack is actually from South Africa. Tell us a bit about how you came from South Africa to the UK to be captain of the British Army team. Uh, well, uh, it was 2005, uh, just decided to grow up a little bit, get some work experience uh, and uh, when I immigrated uh, more or less to the UK and then joined the army in 2007. So, I've um, been really privileged to, to, to get the opportunity to play for the British Army and then end up as the, as the captain. In terms of uh, South African cricket, because you would have left just about, just less than, just short of 10 years ago, were you in fact playing any type of cricket back in South Africa before coming to, to the UK? Yes, I was. I was playing Premier, Premier uh, League cricket back in South Africa, uh, Pretoria area, so uh, decent standard of cricket, uh, I, you know, so, same, same just below the county standard. Right, so were you playing with anybody who is uh, famous now, as they would say, in, in South African cricket? Yeah, there was a couple of guys, um, the likes of Aby de Villiers and uh, Faf Duplessis. We played against them, and uh, you know they they taught us not to bowl a rank ball. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but um, no, the standard of cricket was really good and uh, gave us gave us a good foundation to work on. Uh, in terms of British Army cricket, uh, as I was mentioning to Stuart, the previously the standard of it, of the Army cricket was very very high. What's what's happened in the last couple of years? Uh, well, due to deployment and operations such as Afghanistan, you know, uh, a lot of guys go away um, and therefore we lose a lot of players and, and to try to build the continuity and to keep the players in is quite difficult. But um, we've managed, we've managed to, to keep the standard high um, by playing decent opposition, playing about four um, county 11 sides uh, in the build-up of our season. Um, and uh, yeah, I think hopefully we, we can get it back up to the standard that it used to be um, a few years ago. 
you've got the opportunity here in the Caribbean to enjoy some wonderful weather before you go back to the UK. Obviously, South Africa has some of this type of weather for quite a bit of the year. Um, how do you, how do you um, have a discussion in terms of South African cricket versus English cricket, now that you've experienced both? Um, well, I think, you know, one thing that we always talk about is, you know, positive cricket, you know, it doesn't matter if you're batting or bowling and uh, you have to make things happen for yourself. And um, I think South Africa is on a high at the moment, you know, with all the success that they're achieving. And uh, unfortunately, England isn't isn't generating all that success. But hopefully with a few wins under their belt, uh, you know, confidence will return for the players and, and they can get back up to the standard that they were. How do you relate to the comment that English cricket tends to concentrate more on the longer version of the game as opposed to T20 and 50 over and that's why they don't do so well at it? Um, well, definitely, you know, since the introduction of T20 cricket, I think uh, it's been a, the people who, who stay up to date with, with new ideas, you know, new power hitting, for example. You know, th those are the teams who are uh, achieving all the success. Um, so I think, you know, again, I will say, uh, it, Maybe one win and guys' confidence will get back up, but I definitely need to change the, the you know, the style of, of play um, and just consider, you know, what, what the other teams are doing, maybe. Um, yeah. Well, your South African team, and I say you're because I su suspect you're no English, but your South African team does seem to have the type of players that are essential for the shortened version. Yeah, you know, again, you know, the likes of A.B. de Villiers and who comes in and is able to, you know, play fascinating shots, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really good. And again, I think you have to back yourself as a player to, to be able to deliver the goods and, and provide, provide those scoring opportunities, you know. You've been watching the ICC Cricket World Cup. Your thoughts, it's the most runs, the most centuries ever scored at a World Cup. Your thoughts on the World Cup? Fantastic, fantastic. No, it's been really fun, good to watch, you know, and to see people, especially like the likes of Bangladesh, you know, unfortunately they lost against India, but, you know, for the lower sides to come through, the likes of Ireland as well. Um, I think that that's why we play sport, is to, to introduce new people to the game and uh, to bridge bridge the, uh, the cultural gaps that we can. Um, but long may it continue, you know, I just feel sorry for the bowlers. <laughs> Frank Greenwood is the manager of the British Army team here in Barbados. Uh, Frank, tell us first of all, how, how did it occur for you to be actually in Barbados at the Franklin Stevenson Academy? How did that come about? Uh, we, we, we like to, to get a tour in abroad uh, every, every couple of years uh, and this year we, we chose Barbados. Mm. Uh, the company we went with uh, put us in touch with this, this fantastic facility at, at Franklin's place. It's a great place. Okay, and are you happy with the conditions that you're getting, the type of pitches, etc.? Yeah, yeah, it's been very good. Uh, the, the social side and, and the cricket inside, uh, it, 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 we've been made very welcome uh, and it's a great facility. I'd recommend it to anybody, definitely. You are an administrator. You've said you've been involved in the army side of it for about six years. But prior to that, what were you involved in in terms of cricket administration? Basically, it was with regimental cricket, um, starting off at the, the grassroots of, of army cricket as such. Uh, and then I, I went on with the army ladies, look after them and the under-25 development team. Mm -hmm. um, and here I am. Uh, the, the, the manager couldn't come, so I've, uh, so I've stepped in. in. Yeah. Right, okay, let's talk a bit about cricket administration now, since you've been involved for so many years. What, what, what's wrong with English cricket? Obviously, very disappointing that you didn't quite come out of the qualifying rounds at the ICC World Cup. What's going on? Yeah, it was uh, very disappointing as a, an Englishman to watch England do so poorly. It, it was quite sad, but the top and bom bottom of it is, is maybe we haven't got the, the right people who were out there who were, who were good enough with the right skills. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very, very disappointing, to be fair. You mentioned the right skills and you said top and bottom. Are you referring to both the players and the coaches as well? Um, I, I think you can put too much on the coaches. At the end of the day, the, the players have got to go out and deliver. Uh, and the team, what we put out, should have been good enough to get into the next round. Mm. Um, they didn't perform. It, it was simple as that. They, uh, they, their game plans, what they had, they didn't execute them as well as they probably should have done. Is there something fundamentally wrong with England's approach to the shortened form of the game? Um, we, do, we don't seem that the England players who are playing T20 cricket don't seem to play too much in the, in the county T20. Mm -hmm. So they're not getting exposure to T20 games all the time. Um, there's some very good players who were, who were left at home. Uh, Michael Carberry, James Vince, certain other people who, who, who were just omitted from the team. And uh, they, they hit the ball in different areas. We, we seem to be a little pedestrian. 
Do you think it's uh, unfortunate that no English players uh, actually or, or in great numbers take part in the IPL? It's very difficult with the English season. Uh, our guys come over to the West Indies, uh, I think it is in April, uh, and then we get back into the, uh, the county programme. And that's pretty much the same time as what the IPL are, is. Uh, I know the West Indian team, there's a number of guys who are doing the IPL who are not going to play in the Test Series. Mm -hmm. So it's just the way it is. And those guys are contracted to England, so we, they will always play for England first. In terms of the World Cup, I know you've been watching and enjoying it, despite the departure of England. Uh, your thoughts? Uh, we've had um, very exciting cricket. Loads of runs, I think, which is what people want to see. Loads of runs. Your thoughts? The game has changed totally. The last 10 overs, it seems like you've got to score 110, 120. Oh, 150. Oh, 150, depending on who you're playing for. Uh, no, the game's moved on. Maybe the, uh, the regulations on how many fielders you can have out has, has, has helped change that. Um, and maybe it might change back to the way it was because it's slightly more batsman friendly than bowler friendly. But the crowds want to see runs at the end of the day. Right. And how have you found the how have you found the crowds? Because the crowds have been good um, in Australia and New Zealand. England, of course, are the host for the 2019 World Cup. Uh, you looking forward to that and looking forward to the kind of show that the you can put on. Yeah, we'll definitely be there because we're hosting it. They're, they're talking about changing the format and on current ratings, we might not have even got there if it wasn't in England. So uh, it, it'll, it'll be a sellout everywhere. Uh, it'll be well supported. It'll be a brilliant tournament. Um, there's plenty of West Indians in England uh, and uh, I'm sure they'll be uh, packing the grounds out as well when, the, when your boys are playing. In terms of if we look, come back to the Army team, uh, any standouts? Uh, we see a few players that are going through their practice here at Franklin Stevenson Academy. Any standout players that you see that could perhaps go a little further than playing Army minor county cricket? Yeah, no, one of them is actually a West Indian lad, uh, Simon Marlon. He's a very, very good quick bowler. Uh, held in very high regard um, in uh, combined services cricket um, and he was um, he, he come third in the sports personality of the year award um, for the young sportsman this year so uh, he's, he's done very well he's done very well thank you very much thank you Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. As mentioned by the manager, Marlon Simon is the standout player in this British Army team. Marlon, uh, fast bowler, they tell me um, how long you've been playing this game? About 16 years. Mm -hmm. 16 years now. I enjoy playing the game, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, basically, my dad introduced me to the game, so, and since then, let's keep on playing. And that was back in Grenada? Yeah, in Grenada, mm -hmm. I grew up in Grenada in it. So I, I just enjoy playing cricket in it. Right, you, I was mentioned as well that you were third in the sports personality of the year in the UK. That must have been a great feeling. It was it definitely was. As my first, like second, my second year now in the British Army playing for cricket, and to get this award is really good, isn't it? Because no guys would be there for was six, seven years and never been awarded. Mm -hmm. So we, like we, we know what it is really, really good for me, isn't it? Just a, a head start for me, like in cricket, isn't it? In terms of performance, what was your standout performance that propelled you towards the sports personality? Yeah, basically in, in Lords, isn't it? I bowled really well in the Lords, in Lords ground. Uh -huh. I think I picked up I think four, four, I think twelve runs mm -hmm. in 2020. I, I, I reckon, well, that was the main thing, isn't it? And after, immediately after that, you became a superstar. Well, I, I see from there. But, oh, basically, not only this year, last year as well, I played really well there as well. Everybody was saying, like, that's the best ever seed played in Lords, like, as a young star. Mm -hmm. And since then, I just keep on like, I mean, going far in it. Try my best in every time in it. Okay, that's Marlon Simon, third in the Sports Personality of the Year in the UK. And he's part of the British Army team. And you're watching Massey United Insurance's Line and Life. Join us next week for more.